Alright guys, have to cry back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And with Sentinels practically confirming their team going forward, so much reaction to this. Ten's excited to play with his new lineup, which may well be built around his success going forward. Also, Dapper potentially looking at his next steps. Could it be on Sentinels bench? Could it be on Evil Geniuses? But if Dapper is not on Sentinels bench, who is their substitute player actually going to be? Could Sinatra step back into the team to some extent? Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always i'd greatly appreciate it really helps out the channel thank you very much indeed for doing that one loads of new subs yesterday as well and yes yeah, sentinels sassy it's officially a thing and i thought this was pretty funny yesterday to 52,000 odd likes quick roster mania updates from around the world leviathan firstly melzer and adverso officially released from the team yesterday we kind of expected and saw this coming for quite some time we'll look at the entire roundup in a second of what the rosters look like from around the world there's some good updates there now this from the bleed esports site not an organization, of course, that made it into franchising or to partnerships. They didn't get accepted, but they do have a lot of money. We believe they offered Ye a million dollars. Like, um, I don't know if it was a million a year or whatever, like to join this team. Which he said that he had a big offer from the APAC Pacific region, and um, he decided to not do that and seemingly go to Cloud9 instead. But I guess that leaves Bleed Esports with a fair bit of money to still spend on other players, and that they've brought Juicy into their team. And honestly, this team is probably going to be more exciting, this Ascension roster, than some of the teams in the actual top tier partnership league in the Pacific region, especially because Scary is going to join the roster, formerly of Xerxia, Thai player, like I'm um, definitely a top, top player. And this is the thing really where these players, Scary for example, are easily good enough to be in the partnership league in the kind of, well, in the Pacific side on one of these other teams. The problem is though, that some of the organizations that, uh, that Riot have selected, I think, you know, it's not like they've made a mistake necessarily, but some of the organizations they've selected aren't so willing to, you know, dish out big money or to spend that much, especially similarly in that Pacific region. Therefore, organizations like Bleed, not even in tier one, will give big players like Scary big offers and um, and he'll go play for them instead. So you can't really blame Scary for trying to get the bag here. And I think in due course, he will find his way into the partnership league one way or another. But um, yeah, still, it, it's very interesting, right, that a player of his caliber, formerly of Xerxia and teams along those lines, is not going to be playing in tier one, will play in tier two instead, probably because they've got a better deal on the table than they would have in tier one so that's an interesting question that maybe needs to be answered by like well all around the world really you might see a similar story like this continuing in other regions where good players maybe don't get the offer from eg get a better offer from tier two who knows whether that's the case in north america certainly the case here with bleed so that makes their team rather exciting as well and um, i think there was some talk that scary had been like paid some crazy salary here and massive buyouts turns out the buyout wasn't really like that crazy or anything so I don't think there's really too much to talk about there, but definitely probably gets paid more money there than he would have done from the other even tier one offers that he was considering. You'd imagine he would have gone there otherwise instead. This then, as Flynn puts out, is the current chart of rosters for, well, as we understand it right now. So fraud to loud, patty to talent, both growing in possibility. So that's not exactly a guarantee. An orange pretty much means rumor at this point anyway, but it must be noted here if we look at evil geniuses on the left-hand side that Jorgemo, Combustio, we believe they are re-signing. Superman, we're pretty sure it's going to be there. And then the final player, we didn't know, BCJ. Could it be someone else? Dapper, though, is now back in this kind of spreadsheet here. Now, yes, it does have an orange thing next to it saying it's currently a rumor. Certainly unknown. But um, yeah, interesting that Dapper is now back in the conversation. So we, we talked about that a bit, right? That Dapper may be in that team. Could make sense. That is maybe an offer he has on the table from Evil Geniuses. Or like, what would he prefer to do? Would he prefer to be on EG's starting team? Would he prefer to be the sub for Sentinels? We believe he has the offer dapper to be the substitute for Sentinels. Like, um, I think he'll probably prefer to just play in a team if he can, especially a franchise team, a partnership team. They can have good success. Probably EG need a change or two, I think, if they're actually going to start with that roster to really perform and actually compete with the other top teams that are building some very scary squads, especially in the in the America's Partnership League. But still, it's better, I think, to play in that league than not at all, because you might prove that, okay, you're the guy to be built around for the next iteration of Evil Geniuses, at which point they can become more competitive than I think this team is personally going to be especially compared to the other top dogs that are being formed in the region but that means that BCJ where's he going to go so Chet we think is going to join NRG as their head coach BCJ we don't know what the plan is surprising to me in a way that guys aren't going all out to try and get BCJ services just because all of that exit team have found themselves on partnership teams Def Zekin over at Sentinels we've got a Cryo to 100T you've got Aaron over to Global Esports right in the kind of APAC region so you'd think BCJ would get a similar offer if he finds 
himself out of the league. Like, um, that's just going to be so unfortunate, right? Especially given the way those other exit guys, like, get found offers relatively quickly. Now, quickly on 100 Thieves, they've confirmed they're pretty much signing stuff here. Derek says, yeah, sign contract, mind blown, 100, whatever. And uh, Will was kind of joking around. We know Will, of course, is gone from this team going forward, unfortunately for him, despite doing a pretty decent job. And then Asner says a very similar thing. So, yeah, Derek Asner signing new deals, as I said, even if they're still on the same organization, probably they'll have to sign a new contract under the new partnership rules and regulations and you know whatever's going on there Stella does say have fun at Gen G I'll miss you maybe implying here right that okay obviously Aston is not going to go to Gen G but um he says I'll miss you kind of implying that he's going to stay where he is maybe indicating that Stella will still be the IGL for this team right so there's been some questions about Xander and others could they step into this IGL role probably they're going to keep Stella at least for the time being let's talk Sentinels then to a second says off to a great start thought this is kind of funny here from Pancada at 10 follow me back or I'm quitting the team right about now. I'm not sure Ted has actually followed him back yet either, but yeah, if you guys missed this, they're not messing around. New chapter for the world champion, Sassy Pankada joining the team and loads of reaction to this. Firstly from Tens saying that, uh, yeah, really excited to play with this team and probably at one team that is certainly going to be built around him, but also what happens to Dapper? What happens to Sick, for example? And what could the substitute situation on this roster be? Could Sinatra step in? Because they've got many players on their inactive lineup right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to play with the new team. Like on the team page, it shows like a flag. What what flag are we gonna use? Because we have we have two people from Oh. I almost leaked something. I almost leaked something. Yeah, B. <laughs> or mid. No no no, I, I wasn't I, I just stalled myself completely to not leak any remaining details. I realized I could, what I was saying, I could potentially leak. No, 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 no. Like, I know they announced- No way Shroud is still on the Liquipedia roster. I mean, is there. I don't want to leak anything. Never mind, actually. Yo! 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 <laughs> We're running the no IGL oh. strat. Let him know. The six man? You know the- <laughs> You remember the MJ he's back thing? Yeah. yeah. Doing that with Sinatra as our ninth man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> <laughs> go pro overwatch 2 or go homeless yeah that's my situation right now pretty much that's pretty much my only options actually overwatch 2 or homelessness uh planning on staying on center finding team i'm looking at options nothing is decided Nothing is decided. Might stay, might not. Who knows? True. Do you know if Six Man's played in scrims at all in Valorant? It's up to the team and the coach and all that. I'm sure everything is different. All of them are different, I'm sure. I got Zeke. You and Tyson break up. I Unfortunately, know. from outside influences, you know what I mean? I learned something. So firstly, I'm not exactly sure what kind of Tens was getting at there because he says we've got two players from, and I'm pretty sure this this clip was coming out after the announcement last night. Now, it's obvious there's two Brazilians. So if he was going to say two Brazilians, then uh, that would make sense, right? Now, but otherwise he was going to say we've got two, I don't know, maybe Canadians he was going to say or two Americans because obviously Zekin is American and uh, Def, who we don't know yet, he's British, right? And then Tens is Canadian. So if he was going to say two of one or another, that might imply what's happening there in their starting team, they've got two Brazilians, one Canadian, one American, and then one British player in death. That is the present rumor that we believe is going to happen soon. So with Tens kind of saying, oh, we've got two players from this region. Oh, hang on a second. I can't say it. Then uh, that maybe implies that their substitute is going to be a player from either America, Canada, or Britain, which of course doesn't really narrow it down all that much. But I thought it was uh, worthy of discussion because there are other players out there. You know, people are looking at Shroud. You know, could he still be the sub? I don't really reckon because Dapper could be an option, but Maybe they've got another idea instead of Dapper now they want to have as their sub instead. And then there was also the talk about Sinatra because look how many players are on the Sentinels roster. Sassy Pancada, Tens, obviously Shroud isn't there anymore. Like technically, I don't really know why he's not considered yet inactive. Probably because it hasn't been officially announced, but it has been said by everyone that Shroud is not going to be there going forwards. Probably like uh, he can start his own tier two Ascension team maybe. But yeah, Sick, Shazam. Like um, there's all this type of stuff going on. Zoms is there. Sinatra is kind of still in the ballpark conversation. 
position. I would love to see a team of, you know, Zoms, Sick, maybe. I don't know what's going to happen to Shazam, but Sinatra and Hiko and like whoever, Shroud, get in a team and try and go for a run in tier two. But uh, is there a world in which a player of kind of the, these guys' caliber ends up on the bench for the team going forwards, even though we think that it, Dapper might be kind of the top guy? But then if he's gone, then could it be Sick? Why is he good to go again? So a uh, questionable situation. Definitely enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Even this I thought was pretty funny with Zoms' is next step. I try to do to Loud. Good luck in Brazil. So, I mean, yeah, what's going to happen next for Zoms? Probably the tier two North American Ascension League is where he's going to go if he can find a good team to go with. But as we've seen over the last couple of minutes here, already some of these tier two teams are getting confirmed, especially in the Pacific region with Bleed already making moves. So certainly other teams as well will make moves in other respective regions. And quickly to say on the kind of game changer side, it is indeed going to be Cloud9 White versus Shopify Rebellion today for the victor of the North American Game Changers region. Fluorescent was absolutely frying here at a couple of these maps, but unfortunately it wasn't enough for Misfits Black over the course of the series. They go down and Cloud9 White, of course, will be big favorites for tonight. But very much enjoy to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.